Greetings. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Dr. Nicolette Poe. I'm Assistant Professor of Public Health here at Youngstown State University. And today, we are hosting our Youngstown Alumni Lecture Series. And we're going to be addressing health equity and looking at the collective impacts of this kind of work. And our guest speaker today is Michelle Edison. Um, and before I start asking you some questions, I really want to talk about what you've been able to accomplish so far, because you are alumni of Youngstown State University, which we're very much excited of, and our Masters of Public Health program. Yes. And some of the things that you have already accomplished is you you have your master's degree in exercise physiology in West Virginia University, and you're currently working on your doctor's degree uh, with a focus on health equity at John Hopkins University. So. Now that we kind of know what your educational background is, I'm sure people will want to know what brought you to public health, and most importantly, what made you be interested in getting a master's in public health? Well, first of all, I just want to say Happy New Year, Dr. Poe, and thank, thank you. you so much for um, allowing me to share uh, this evening with you, this time with you to discuss um, uh, my experiences in mm -hmm. public health. And so it really was a combination of a lot of things. Like you said, I started off in exercise physiology. It was very clinical, um, but I got the opportunity to help people individually and um, worked in a rehab setting for a little while. And then once we moved here, to Ohio, I got the opportunity to work for the YMCA and teach fitness classes, do personal training, and really see um, some of the opportunities that there were to help individuals to really achieve better health. And as I was doing that, I actually um, wound up getting another opportunity to teach here at YSU in the Exercise Science Department, or formerly Exercise Science Department. So I was teaching the students and um, really getting an understanding of uh, what their perception was of the field and what they might do in the future. So as I'm going along and I'm working at the Y, uh, and working here at YSU, I then get um, the opportunity to bring on some chronic disease, signature chronic disease um, programs for the YMCA. And so here that was, that was very new to have this wellness focus. And so as you can imagine, doing those two things, exercise, science, and then chronic disease, they started to really melt together. And I saw things from a broader perspective, right? Like what's the population's health? Um, how do we help people to get over these chronic conditions? How do we merge the two? And so to get to the point of how I got into public health, um, you know, I was still trying to figure out, you know, what do I really want to be when I grow up, right? And so I had a mentor and friend at the time, Dr. Kelly Kirksey, who um, just, we had a conversation and she said, have you ever thought about public health? And I don't know if you've ever seen the Polar Express, but you know, if you can hear the bell, then you still believe. And it was sort of like that. Like I heard the bell when she said public health. And so I started to research it. I talked to um, Dr. Amy Lee and found out about the program and thought, you know what, this is, this sounds like something that's for me. And so then I applied and got into the program. And I mean, I, I really, I probably recruited, I don't know how many people, because <laughs> um, I really learned so much from the program. It was so practical for me. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the program, I was still teaching here mm -hmm. and working in um, the wellness programs at the Y. And I was literally applying everything that I was learning almost immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just found it to be so beneficial to what I was doing then and obviously to what I'm doing now. So that's interesting that you say that, that whole notion of how people find their way to public mm -hmm. health. We all have a different journey about right. you know, how, you know, how we discover public health. And you know, given the large worldwide attention public health has yes. you know, garnished over the last year about you know, the public health crisis that the um, US has experienced and across the world, 
one of the things that people always ask about was how you how can you use your master's of public health like can I, am I really going to be able to find a job once I get this degree or if I if I just have an undergrad degree in public health is that enough mm -hmm. and are there really jobs out there in public health and so that makes me think about um, what experiences that you're having um, where you work at at Mahoney County Public Health. Can you share some of that about what the roles and responsibilities you have there at the health department? Sure, um, and that's such a great question because um, initially when I got into public health, like I am probably a lifelong student. So the idea of going back to school was just great to me. And because I was already sort of working in the field where I was able to serve people, I didn't necessarily think about, oh, I'm going to look for a position specifically in public health. And so while I was in school, I got the opportunity to do a practicum at Mahoney County Public Health. I actually helped to um, implement the uh, Project Dawn program, which mm -hmm. is the Narcan distribution program. And a few months later, there was an opportunity to help to develop a new division called a Pathways Community Hub. And I applied for the position to be the coordinator to help to spearhead this uh, division that was really uh, implemented to address the issue around infant mortality. And so, Dr. Pro, as you know, and a lot of us are aware of, the huge disparities that we see in infant mortality, uh, <clears throat> not just nationally, but obviously here in Ohio and definitely here in Mahoning County. And so that was inspired by being ready, right? And, and this program really allowed me to be ready for opportunities. And so because of that, I not only had the um, fortune of being able to help to lead this new division and learn all about maternal and child health and infant mortality and all of the factors that are involved in that, right? We're talking about health equity and we know that when we're looking at disparities, it's not just that sort of clinical component, although that's very important, but it's what led to all of that, right? And we know that it is uh, a combination of our environment and our relationships and are we able to access the things that we need and um, a lot of things that we may not always consider. And so I began to see how all those things played together and how public health is really in a good position to uh, have a positive effect on disparities. So if I think I heard what you said, you said that you took your practicum experience that you had to do in your Masters of Public Health program and you leveraged that experience or some may refer to it as an internship, that mm -hmm. hands-on experience that you, that special project that you have to do um, in your graduate program and you leveraged those relationships to, to, to ideally find the next the ideal paid job in public health, right? Is that the always the, the goal is that you, wherever you do your internship at, hopefully you get a job there, but most importantly, you take that experience. It's not just going through the motions, but actually taking that experience and then applying it to something to do good and to, to, to make things happen. Absolutely. So that makes me think about this whole notion where we talk about health equity and infant mortality. You know, there, we're in a new year. And so as we think about the, what needs to be done this year. Can you give us some ideals and insights in regards to what your goals are for health equity in 2021? Right, yeah, so obviously with the year that we just had. What a year. What a year. Um, so, so I think that although this has been a challenging year in a lot of ways, especially for public health, it's probably been the best year to be in public health. Uh, we have seen the focus shift, mm -hmm. right, across the country. We've seen and heard people really acknowledge the disparities that have, have really been embedded in our communities for decades, mm -hmm. for, you know, years and years. And we now have the opportunity to hopefully really address them in mm -hmm. a, uh, in a significant manner. Right. So as we got through last year and figured out, you know, all of those different changes. Um, I think about the work that we do at, and 
the Pathways Community Hub, we work with community health workers. Mm -hmm. And those community health workers who are absolutely amazing, they're the ones who work with our clients. Um, and, and many of our clients are expectant mothers or new mothers because again, like I said, we're addressing infant mortality. So when we looked at last year, it was our community health workers making sure that our clients had what they needed, that they were connected, right? As everyone started to have to stay at home and isolate and quarantine, we wanted to make sure that our clients had the things that they needed to keep going, right? But then we also had a lot of other people who were in the same positions. And so what we're doing now this year is really taking that opportunity where we know what the disparities are, mm -hmm. so let's now try to really address them and, and not only address them, but let's listen to the experts. And the experts are the people who are affected, right, right. by these uh, disparities and, and by these inequities. And so um, one of our goals is to really allow the community, or, and, or not even allow, but to really ask the community to take the lead in, in some of the initiatives that we're doing. So imagine in 2021, if we could have not only our community, but you know, across this United States, Absolutely. all local communities, having these, you know, look, what we're gonna call it, local community conversations, mm -hmm. town hall talks, call it whatever you wanna call it, but really having these opportunities to have these dialogues to talk to, you know, leaders in the community and have residents within the community to, to have that exchange and not only just talk about these, you know, what the problems are, but help identify what potential solutions right. could be, right? And so if we're trying to find solutions, right, we're trying to find solutions to infant mortality, you know, sometimes it is so easy to get um, stuck in what we've always done. Sure. This is what we've always done, and this is what we're gonna continue to do. And so when we think about how do we move forward in 2021, and, and we're looking for progress, we're looking for how do we move forward, how do we um, start to begin to make a, see a change mm -hmm. in, in these issues of infant mortality and chronic disease, the question becomes, how do we create these opportunities where we could have these discussions? You know, right. you know, we want to encourage people, you know, do they just call up to the health department? Do they send an email? Do they tweet or you know, post something on social media? Right. You know, what, what could they do if, they're, if people are interested and they want to get involved and they want their voice to be heard? How can we collectively create um, a, a platform, mm -hmm. if you want to call it mm -hmm. that, or an opportunity yeah. for people to have that, you know, to share their opinions and have that voice, but most importantly, where it can be well received, so therefore people don't feel like, well, I did call up there, I did send an email, right. and it, and nothing happened, right? And so can you talk about that, that whole process of, in order to see change happen, it, one, doesn't happen overnight, mm -hmm. but there are things that could be done that creates this as I want to, as we can call it, this health equity opportunities sure. for dialogue and for action. Yeah. Any insights or thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I think that's a great point because typically, I think the way that we have tried to address some of these issues is to implement some really great programs mm -hmm. that have been um, evidence-based and mm -hmm. where we are serving the community, but we don't necessarily at every turn uh, engage the community or get their input on um, some of these issues and they may see it from a different viewpoint than what we see it from. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think that this year, in addition to the great programs and initiatives that we already have going mm -hmm. on, um, we are going to be creating um, opportunities to really not just hear from the community mm -hmm. but allow them um, you know, the, the space to decide, you know, what is really going to be beneficial. One of the things we've been discussing is a maternal health. Mm -hmm. And we know that that's a huge issue. Um, we've, we've talked about infant mortality, but we also know that there's been a call to action by um, the Surgeon General mm -hmm. and the um, government to really address maternal health. And so we will be developing a maternal community education council where we will have mothers who will, they are the experts, and so they will give their um, 
input. Hopefully they will be willing to share their experiences with us mm -hmm. so that we can really use that to help to um, make the changes that need to happen. That's just one example mm -hmm. of um, how we would like to really get the community to um, be a part of this instead of us telling the community what should be done, um, really uh, stepping back and, and letting the community tell us. I think that's really important when we talk about public health accomplishments um, and all that has been accomplished thus far, you know, really getting the community involved and, 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 and not just did you show up, if you showed up then you were involved, right? right? So it's so much more than did you come to the program, right? right? Mm -hmm. And did you say you like it, right? right? Well, I hope you liked it, but did you actually take the information that you received in that mm -hmm. program and apply it? So is that next level of evaluation yeah. or next level of assessment or engagement mm -hmm. to really get you know, the best outcomes and most importantly getting community engagement. So that makes me think about this whole notion of what do we do or how, how do we really connect with them? So you mentioned like having your community health workers yes. and you know, they're really so key to mm -hmm a lot of great programs that happen here in, in, in Youngstown, but in many other communities, and thinking about how we leverage their connections directly with the, you know, the people our, of our communities, but most importantly, thinking about how do we, um, what else can we do? Because that's just one strategy, right. and we have to have multiple approaches to addressing such a major issue of infant mortality. And so you talked about the importance of having you know, maternal health, and that is so true. Your research clearly right. shows that you know, a healthy mom, before she thinks about right. thinking about being a mom, mm -hmm. or know that she's a mom, mm -hmm. even, you know, just being healthy in general right. before conception is so important, right. even when you're not thinking about having a baby, right? Because you never know what might happen. Right. Having said that, you know, then is once you do become pregnant, you know, making sure that you, you know, do all that you can to stay healthy, mm -hmm. and you know, like by going to your doctor's visits and you know, taking whatever medication you need to do, doing what you need to make make it a good experience for you and, and the baby to come. And then when you think about what happens once after the baby is right, here, right. that becomes just as important as what was happening during pregnancy, right? right? right. And so I'm just curious, you know, are there local groups um, here in our area that people could get involved in to begin to know about the different programs that exist here. Right. And I'm just thinking about in general, you know, I'm sure in many other communities there are these local com coalitions or groups that are doing things to help address infant mortality and other issues in the community. Right. And just like, how do people get involved? Yeah. How do they get connected? Right. Yeah, I think we've talked a lot about that over the past year mm -hmm. um, because of how everything changed, right? right? We had to change how we interact, right. how we communicate. Our community health workers, they go into the home. They couldn't do that last year. Mm -hmm. So we had to change. How do we stay connected to our clients and the community when we can't see each other face to face? And so, um, although that was a challenge, I thought it was a really good opportunity because it allowed us to be innovative. Mm. And some of the things that we had to change we will probably continue to implement those things because we found them to be so effective. But uh, when we look at things like infant mortality, we have the My Babies First Infant mm. Mortality Coalition. And it's made up of at three to four dozen different organizations, programs, uh, and, and stakeholders, concerned members. There's lots of programs that we have here locally, which is great. We have lots of resources, but to your point, I think sometimes uh, the community may not be fully aware, and so mm -hmm. to get more involvement is a, is a great way to help the community to know what we already have mm -hmm. in addition to what should we also add. And so we've looked at, we just implemented a social media mm -hmm. uh, focus and campaign for My Babies First on the website, on I believe Facebook and Instagram, just to increase that awareness. Um, having opportunities like this to talk about it. Um, once we're able to get back out into the community, uh, we will have our different um, 
ways that we engage, you know, the traditional um, um, health fairs and, and community fairs, but I also think um, allowing the community, again, to um, take the lead. So when we develop a maternal council and, let, and we'll, we'll let the moms take the lead on that, um, in our coalition, it is very broad because again, we know that the health of an individual isn't just made up of those clinical components, mm -hmm. but it's those social determinants of health. Mm -hmm. It is the environment, it is housing, it is employment. And so we want to bring all of those players as well into the discussion um, because there's so much overlap, right? When we talk about health, we want to make sure that we're able to get the full picture of how we can really improve those outcomes um, alongside of the community. So you use the, a buzzword that we use all the time in public health, social determinants of health, mm -hmm. but for the average person, like, what are you right, talking about? Right. What's that social determinants yeah. of health, you know? And you gave a really good examples of some of those common things that affects people's health. Do they have transportation? Right. Can they get, do they have a job? Um, are, are there quality schools? And I know in, in, young, in Youngstown and in other surrounding communities, you know, these are common issues that mm -hmm. people talk about sure. all the time. And so when we talk about um, how can, how does, you know, are there jobs in your community? Is it a, you know, a safe environment? Are there sidewalks, you know? <laughs> or is, is, is there, uh, a cl clearly paved road right. to drive down. Mm -hmm. I mean, these all little things um, that bec could be a big issue. Are there grocery stores right. within walking distance or right. within a mile of where um, people live? You know, how far you have to travel to get fresh fruits and vegetables? All of these mm -hmm. things. Do you know how to cook? <laughs> That's a real issue, Wait, right? Do you? <laughs> I don't know. It depends on who you ask, right. right? But you know, these are the things that do you have time to cook? Right. You know, do you work two or three jobs? Sure. Um, are you constantly out of the home? Are you in the home going crazy because right. now you and everybody else right. is in the home with you? Right. You know, can you afford to keep food in the house because now everybody's at home? These are all real issues that we are all experiencing, right? Yeah. And so when we talk about how do we think of how do we break out and you know start to be more innovative in this year um, and in our communities I think some of the things that we we might have to think about or maybe step back maybe that's a better word maybe mm. we have to step back and say okay well we know that that works what else can we try right. to see if that might work as well right. Maybe that's the different yeah. strategy there because there are some things that we know have proven to be successful. Right. And the research definitely shows and supports those things. But we also know the data tells us that, you know, the numbers are not necessarily getting any better right. even though we are doing evidence-based programs. So the question becomes, you know, that magic thing about is there enough funds? Yeah. <laughs> No, there's never enough funds. Right. But the question becomes, how do we be the best stewards of the funds that we have, mm -hmm. right? And then, what do we do? Yeah. You know, how do we really take what we hear from, from our target audience, from our priority populations, from our clients, from, you know, people who are concerned about this issue, and really take that to heart and incorporate it in the next things that right. we do? Because that is really going to be the test of, our success. Mm -hmm. How do we do that yeah. in a way that I don't know if everybody's going to be happy, yeah. but the reality is if we really want to see the change that we all say that we want to see, mm -hmm. we have to be willing to, um, in some cases, some people may say give up power. Mm -hmm. Others may say you have to be willing to speak up. Um, and some others may say you have to be willing to um, let go mm -hmm. and not let go of like give up but just right. be open to what could be mm -hmm. so when we think about this new year and what could yeah. be um, do you have any other thoughts and goals about what you would like to see happen here particularly as we talk about with the advisory group is there is there someone that people should just call contact the health department mm -hmm. if they're interested yeah. in getting involved in this new advisory group that's being started 
are there, you know, should they post on social media um, that they're interested? You know, you know we want to be, have something for everybody because right. we recognize not everybody has access to the internet and not everybody is on social media. Mm -hmm. Not everybody has a phone. Right. And so, you know, being mindful of everybody's not in the same place, yeah. how do we solicit that, that such a, how do we collect such Im that important mm -hmm. feedback that we want to know from the people who have the best information for yeah. us, right? You right, know, right. and when we think about that and how that connects back to the work that we do in public health, um, can you give some insight on that? Yeah, I think, you know, I think that's a great point because it's not just a one size fits all. Mm -hmm. And I think what this past year the past few weeks, the past few days has shown us is that um, I believe that people are ready for the change that mm -hmm. you're talking about. And I think that we really are, um, we need to take that opportunity um, to not just talk about it, but to actually take action. And so I think one of the things that the health department did was as I talked about my role um, in leading the Pathways Community Hub, my current title is Director of Health Equity Strategies and Initiatives, mm -hmm. which is new for the health department. And we understand that it's, it's really important because if we don't affect the health of everyone in the community, our whole community won't be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that um, having a plan <laughs> is really important and I think that that's what um, we've been talking about like what is the actual plan and mm -hmm. I think that that's what people are waiting for you know I grew up in Baltimore 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 okay <laughs> west side and the things that we're talking about mm -hmm. now are things that I witnessed experienced mm -hmm. growing up in Baltimore um, we were fortunate that there was a grocery store at the end of our street so we could walk but we didn't have a car growing up so I think about some of our clients who, unless they're able to get transportation to get the basics, mm -hmm. basic necessities, how would they survive? And those are things that today I would take for granted, mm -hmm. right? I can easily go out and, and go to the store. And so we need to think differently, as you said, right? Um, not just from my perspective, but from uh, the people that we serve from their perspective. So. One of the things that we're doing, in addition to obviously having the My Babies First uh, Coalition and all of the great programs that we have to address infant mortality with our community health workers and other home visitors, we're also looking at, we have um, in the past few months had a group that's really been talking about racism as a public mm -hmm. health crisis. And this is not a new topic, right? No, We've heard this, um, especially last year, and I think Ohio has has led the pack in communities that have made a declaration, mm -hmm. um, Youngstown being one of them, uh, racism as a public health crisis. And that is just a group of people who are really concerned and want to see our community to, to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so having um, opportunities like that, having groups that are really working together. When we talk about collective impact, it is all of those puzzle pieces being put together to make that full picture. Um, and sometimes the roles that we need to fill isn't the ones that we expect, mm. right? And so tell, I- Tell me more about that. Yeah, I think that that is what I've learned mm. over the past years and the past few years is that when you talk about, you know, sometimes you have to take a step back, mm -hmm. it may mean that I have to shift. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I lead, but sometimes I have to follow. And I think that um, when we get to the point where we're okay with being whatever we need to be for the greater good, then that's when we're gonna see real mm -hmm. change happen. Mm -hmm. But if we continue to kind of do what we've always been doing, and not that those things don't work, but the problem is so huge. And infant mortality is just the tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. It is really just a symptom of the larger problem. I mean, we haven't even gotten into the chronic conditions mm. or other factors um, that are affecting the health of our community. And it affects everyone. It's not just the people who don't have transportation. It's not just the mom who had that poor birth outcome. 
if one of us suffers, we all suffer, right? I mean, we, we've seen those pictures ad nauseum over the past year. Like, you're, we see what's happening in D.C. We saw what was happening in other states and communities, and we felt that, right? Because we were all one community. So that makes me think of something. If I haven't done so, please send me your questions because we have a little bit more time before we um, end and I want to make sure that I get any of your questions um, before we end if you have those, as, especially if you want to know how to get engaged, um, how to, how, maybe you have some suggestions or ideals, please post them and we will try to make sure that we address as many as we can before we end today. Um, having said that, that kind of makes me think about um, some other themes that you kind of talked about, like, you know, the whole issue of chronic disease, you know, infant mortality, chronic disease such right. as hypertension, right. diabetes. Um, some of us carry a little bit more weight than we want to. And, and now since it's the new year, we all have our New Year's That's resolutions. Right. In my case, I'm going to keep my New Year's resolutions to myself. <laughs> but, you know, one of those is to continue to do what I've always done. And if you know me mm -hmm. and you, you know, we're into being physically active um, because it just does the body good. Right. You know, when I'm upset about something, I need, I need to go run that off right. or, you know, find something to do to release that stress because, you know, sometimes days are good and sometimes days are right. bad. Right. But, you know, just being able to get out, even in Ohio, mm -hmm. in the wintertime, right. you know, being able to be in motion is really important, especially now right. um, as we continue to um, have to deal with social isolation and you know not being able to do what we've done in the past right. or haven't been able to do be as free as we like to be out in uh, out and about and so thinking about how we can what what can we do you know to be more physically active to to eat better to you know those new 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 year's resolutions of stop smoking and yeah. you know reduce you know, the amount of uh, drugs and alcohol that we do, ideally stopping. Right. But whatever that is, you know, thinking about these new strategies. This is the time where we're thinking mm -hmm. about this is going to be the year, right? right? right. This is, if this is going to be the year, then the question becomes, where do we start? Yeah. Where do we start? Right. Yeah, I think that that's the question that we should always ask, mm -hmm. right, and from the beginning. And so one of the things that I've done and our groups have done, whether it's the Infant Mortality Coalition mm -hmm. or the um, uh, group which uh, is called MAGIC, uh, oh. Mahoning Anti-Racism Justice and Inclusion Coalition, uh, we have looked at other communities. What have other communities implemented what are some of the strategies that they have used that um, actually have worked? And, you know, we never want to reinvent the wheel. We just want to make it roll a little more smoothly. And so we've, we've done some things like that to get some input. We've worked with actually some um, YSU and PH students who have done some of that background um, investigation for us to give us some ideas as to how we might move forward. We're looking at how do we develop a strategy and so getting input to see, you know, who needs to be involved, um, how do we go from A to B to C, and really taking the time to be um, <clears throat> thoughtful about the work that we're going to be doing and not just, um, you, you know, there, there's a place for passion mm -hmm. and emotion and excitement but there's also a place and time to actually do the work. And the work is what's gonna really make the difference. And so taking the time to really sort of lay out those plans first and getting the right amount, of, the right input um, it is, is really important. And I think that that's really what we wanna do this year. Even though we know life still has to go on, we still have work to do on top of, right, that we still are dealing with COVID-19 and on top of everything else that's going on. Okay, well, we got a lot of questions. So oh, I'm gonna try to see if I can squeeze all of these in. Okay. So one of the things that was suggested, they thought it might be a really great idea to have a community town hall meeting. They thought that was a great, yes. great platform to, to create that um, d dialogue around health equity. And then some others have suggested that this whole ideal of self-care management um, could be key in health so education important. and how you implement that in these new innovative approaches. Right. Um, and then the other 
um, comments that we received is about it's so important for moms to have a voice to share their experience. So then the question here is, how will your work impact um, COVID-19 vaccination process in the city? And how can that possibly affect change in healthcare? Mm. Now, that is a loaded question. Yes. <laughs> That's a very loaded question. Um, so <clears throat> perhaps when you, if you can answer that in regards to infant mortality. Yeah, I think, again, what we've seen over this past, the past 12 months or so, um, is really helping to shape what the future of not just public health, but health looks like. And if we look at um, how things have had to change and adapt, and, and, and taking some of those best practices that have really been effective, um, the focus on how do we ensure that everyone in the community has access, that everyone understands what's going on. Um, some of those strategies that we've used to address COVID-19 are strategies that can be used more broadly to address the issues that we're talking about now, like infant mortality, like chronic conditions. And so I would suspect from not just here, but what I've seen sort of nationally is that a, a, it's really been inspiring and it's really allowed us to see what some of those um, new ways of doing things could be to really address um, communities that may not have had their needs met as, as in a way that really helped them to reach their health potential. So, It sounds like what we need to do is not only consider this community town hall to really create that platform to have that discussion, right. but also be open-minded to the notion that what might be discussed may absolutely take us outside of our comfort zone. And we Correct. say, oh, it's just too expensive. We don't have the funds Correct. to do that. Correct. Well, there's never enough funds, right? But then the question becomes, with the little bit of funds that we do have, how do we begin to incorporate some of these suggestions mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. what we're already doing? Right. Even this is just a little tweak, a little, let's try this and see what it happens. Yeah. Recognizing that you might have to try, you know, multiple times mm -hmm. with modifications right. to get it to the point where you get the best results. But those, those it could be little steps that could work, it way, work its way into mm -hmm. bigger steps right. or, you know, bigger, projects. And so um, as we think about all of the changes that we're seeing and that needs to happen, one of the questions that we have here is how can I as a health educator connect my family with programs that could benefit them and their families in need of their resources? Oh yeah, that, that's again, <coughs> like I said, we in Mahoning County, we have a lot of resources which is great but if people aren't aware of them are they really doing what they need to be doing and so a great way to uh, connect to programs or to find out what's available is to call your local health department that could be Mahoning County Public Health it could be Youngstown City Health District um, wherever you're at. Wherever you're at okay. exactly. Call your local health department. Call your, okay. that's call, a, now you know we might <laughs> Whoever has this phone might not be happy, but the point is, no, they should call. <laughs> you need to call. Right. If you want to get the yes. information, call, send emails, go to their website, the website, go to social media, ask your questions, seek help. Yes. The key thing is if who, ye who do not ask, do not receive, right? right? right. And keep asking mm -hmm. because just because you ask once doesn't necessarily right. mean you, the multiple times is okay, right? right? right. Okay, so we, we want people, we want to hear from you. Right. Um, and we're really trying to do um, 
a, a better job of getting, of, of communicating and getting the word out. And so when we talked about things like social media, mm -hmm. um, um, there's been a lot of attention to making sure that social media is active because I know that a lot of people use that mm -hmm. as a way to get information and to communicate, to make sure that our websites are up to date and that contact information is up to date. And so those are some great ways to at, at least make that first connection okay. and then you know, we can move forward with trying to get you to where um, that resource is. Okay, we got, we got limited time here. We got a lot more questions because limit. I'm gonna try to ask this last, maybe one, I'm gonna try to squeeze two more questions okay. in. What kind of strategies beyond or in addition to evidence-based programs should the community consider to improve health outcomes and address racism as a public health crisis? That's a big question. That's a, that's a great question and a great point because everything that works isn't necessarily evidence-based. Mm. And when we look at evidence-based programs, you also have to consider who developed that evidence, right? Mm -hmm. who, who was in that research? You know, is it for every population? Is it for your, your group that you are focusing on? And so I think when we look at, <clears throat> excuse me, best practices or what's worked well in other communities, that's a, that's a good way to determine, well, this may be something that we want to implement. When we talk to the community, you know, there's so many great grassroots efforts that mm -hmm. are going on that may not be evidence-based, but they are really making a difference. And so we need to look to those experts and um, get, get their input on what we're doing and um, be really open-minded. And, and I think we're seeing sort of, sort of that change a bit. So that was mer emerging practices. Yes. You know, we need to do some more, you know, we need to study this more and do some more Absolutely. evaluation to see if it happens. Okay, on this one last question, last question. I'm gonna squeeze it in. How has COVID-19 epidemic shift your approach with programs geared towards infant mortality and substance abuse? Wow, that's a, that's a really great question. I think initially, like I said, um, we had to completely take a step back because for us with the Pathways Community Hub, we were in the home, the community health workers. And so um, that was taken away. Mm -hmm. And so we still understood that not only did our clients still have the needs that they had, but they may have additional needs. Mm -hmm. And some of those needs maybe were a little more difficult to identify, right? So community health workers, identifying needs and, and connecting them to resources. And so what we've done is, um, one of the things that we've done internally is to make sure that we as the hub and as the health department are really supporting those community health workers. So we know that um, they are dealing with additional challenges. And so making sure that we're communicating a little more frequently with them and seeing what their needs are. Um, trying to anticipate what some of those issues may may be for our clients. We know um, we've saw long lines for few distributions, mm -hmm. right? And so we were able to um, have uh, our community health workers be able to deliver um, some boxes of food on a regular basis to our clients. Little, as you say, tweak, right? How mm -hmm. do we just make those little tweaks to ensure that um, our clients are getting the things that they need. All of our community health workers were educated from the from day one by one of our public health nurses on COVID-19. And so they were able to immediately begin to talk to our clients about how to stay safe. What is, you know, hygiene practices, what to do if you feel like you're getting sick. We were bringing clients masks and hand sanitizer and cleaning products, making sure that they weren't missing their medical appointments as well, especially for clients who had those underlying issues. And so we began to sort of shift our focus to make sure that, okay, these are some things that maybe our clients may not be thinking about, our moms may not be thinking about, but we wanna make sure that they are staying safe and making sure that we were communicating with other partners in the community, right, and, and working um, better together, whether it was with housing, right, we had things like rental assistance. Mm -hmm. MyCAP, which is also one of our um, agencies with community health workers, provided um, tons of rental assistance, and so we wanted to help to facilitate that. And so just shifting um, a bit in how we approached serving our clients 
And what we actually saw, Dr. Poe, is that our um, moms and our families were having really good outcomes this year, mm -hmm. those that were enrolled in the hub. Um, and so we're really excited about that. And so we hope that this bit of a shift, making sure that it's not rocket science, mm -hmm. it's just making sure that people have what they need and that we stay in communication with them. So the key thing is really trying to get people connected if you're yes. pregnant, um, you know, reaching out and getting part of the Pathway Hub, getting part of that program to gain access to resources right. and programs. Okay, and I mean, we could go on, we could and, go on, on and on and on. <laughs> we are almost out of time. So I want to leave you, to, um, give you an opportunity to give any last parting thoughts that you want to share with our audience today um, before we close up today. Yeah, I, I think just, um, I'm excited about this year. Um, I, you know, instead of making a resolution, I came up with a motto. Okay. And my motto is no excuses, find solutions. And so I would say that um, I'm hoping to find solutions with the community this year. And so I'm looking forward to that. And so I appreciate the, the ask of the community to reach out to the to us at the health department at the hub because i think that that is the way that we're really going to be able to make a difference is is by working together okay so if it's your new year's resolutions your your um, vision boards or whatever that is that you do to get yourself motivated the key point that we want you to think about today and throughout this year and every day really is that you know, your health is important, right. right? If we can all agree that our health is important, then the question becomes, what will you do to help you and your family to maintain that health? And then once you've had that assessment, think about what can I do to help my neighbor and my community mm -hmm. have that help right. and maintain that health? And so what we say here in public health every um, often is that no matter <clears throat> where you are in life, may you be young, middle age, or old, wiser, health is always going to be important. And so if we can agree that we will focus on living a healthy lifestyle, then we can utilize and engage public health every day, yep. everywhere, and everybody can be involved. So thank you for joining us tonight and the YSU Youngstown State University Alumni Lecture Series. Thank you so much.